Fandom, how's it going? It's your boy Hardcover, and this is it. This is the list you guys have been waiting for. This is the one you guys have been asking me if I'm going to do. This is the best of 2016. Yes, these are the creme de la creme. These are the best comics that came out in this year. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Coming in at number five, we have Thor by Jason Aaron and Russell Dowderman. This book is awesome. Continuing the story of Jane Foster as the Thoris or Thor or whatever you want to call her. Basically, she wields the hammer of Mjolnir and it has been a blast all the way through. Not only has it been a blast, but Russell Dowderman's art has been or just absolutely crushing it on every panel. You doubt me? Take a look at some of these digital scans that I'm putting up here. I mean just fantastic and beautifully done. I love this book. And in a way, it's shaping up to be kind of a tragedy because what's going on in this book is that Jane Foster is dying. She has been diagnosed with cancer and it is killing her slowly. Now, she's doing chemotherapy, but every single time that she transforms into Thor, it flushes out the chemo. So you've got that conflict, you've got that, oh my gosh, is she gonna make it, is she not? This, hands down, is one of the best books that's being published right now. Jason Aaron is, without a doubt, one of the best writers at Marvel and he is crushing it on every single thing that he is doing. Coming in at number four, we have Hellboy in Hell. Look, I'm gonna be completely honest, in a year that Hellboy comes in at number four, which is my favorite character written by my favorite writer and artist of all time, you know it's a damn good year. Now, Hellboy in Hell wraps up a 20 plus year story that Mike Mignola has been telling. Hellboy has now been put in hell. I'm not gonna give away how, but you know, that's all you really need to know. He's walking around hell, he's going through different experiences, and he's going through the kingdoms of hell. It's absolutely brilliant. It's equal parts abstract, and equal parts a little bit confusing. I know a lot of fans online were saying, look, I'm not entirely sure I get exactly what's going on, but hell, it does look beautiful, and Dave Stewart's colors in this are astounding. Dave Stewart is without a doubt one of the best, if not the best colorist in the industry right now, and he proves it here in spades. I love this series, I love Hellboy, and I'm not gonna front, seeing Big Red at the end of the series go off and accept his fate kind of left a little bit of a tear in my eye, even though I was kind of left scratching my head a little bit going, I'm not really sure I understand what's going on. But still, great series, finally wrapped up, and I'm really interested to see where Mike takes this character if he decides to come back. Now I'm gonna preface something before we get into the number three pick. I have not read Vision. Some of you out there are probably going, what the hell is wrong with you? Are you kidding me? You're not a real comic book fan. How have you not read Vision by Tom King? Yada, 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 I'm waiting for a hardcover edition of it. So Vision will not appear on this list. What will appear on this list is Sheriff of Babylon. Oh my God, Sheriff of Babylon. Wow, hands down, one of the best books that I've read this year, and I emphasize that. And it really is one of the best books that I've read this year. Absolutely powerful, absolutely engaging, and it just grips you from beginning to end. Taking place in 2003 in Baghdad, this follows a CIA officer as he's tasked to kind of recruit and train new officers in Baghdad. Now, if you know anything about Tom King, he was a CIA agent. A lot of this is taken from his experience in Baghdad. In fact, every single issue of Sheriff of Babylon has to go through CIA approval. And in this story, one of the main character's agents ends up dead, which means he is tasked to find out who the killer is. Hands down, one of the strongest books that I've read this year. Sheriff of Babylon is without a doubt gripping, it's moving, it grabs you and does not let you go. It is a hell of a ride all the way through. And if you read this trade, if you read this trade and you are not feeling some type of emotion, whether it's anger or sadness at the end of this, you may just be dead inside. It is that powerful. I say this a lot and I stand by this. The most affecting comic that I've ever read is Punisher Max by Garth Ennis, The Slaver's Arc. At the end of that arc, I needed to stop and take a drink. This is the only comic that has ever matched that level of just how much it affected me, where I put the book down, took a drink, sat down, and just needed a breath because I was shaking in anger. It is that good. And the art in here is astounding. Mitch Gerard's is crushing it, absolutely crushing it, and I cannot get enough of this. I'm so excited that we are getting a second season of Sheriff of Babylon next year, and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. 
Coming in at number two, this book was something that for me came out of nowhere. I didn't know anything about the characters going into it. I really was not prepared for what the book would do to me on a personal level. I really just wasn't. And in fact, this book was the first book that I ever had to give the perfect award. I created a new scale of greatness for this book. That's how great I thought it was, that I had to add something else to it. Of course, I'm talking about Tom King's Omega Men. This is the second book on my list by Tom King. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, is it good. I mean, just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Omega Men centers around Kyle Rayner. Now, Kyle Rayner at the beginning of the story has been captured by a group of tyrannical fanatics called the Omega Men. At the beginning of the story, Kyle Rayner is captured by this group called the Omega Men, and the Omega Men have big plans for Kyle Rayner. You see, they are what's known as kind of terrorists in this story because they are fighting back against the Citadel. Now, the Citadel is a group of aliens that they rule this galaxy with an iron fist. Kyle Rayner soon finds out that, well, you know what? This is wrong. I'm going to join the Omega Men, and I am going to stop these guys. Or is it as wrong as he thinks? The Omega Man seeks to answer the question of who is right and wrong in war, and in the end, you really don't get those answers easily. It is hands down one of the best books that I've read this year. It's powerful, it's astounding, left my jaw dropped on the floor. I fully expected at the end of this book to go in there with all the characters ending up dead. Now, I'm not gonna give away who dies and all that other stuff, but I will say what I got out of it was far more emotional than just, oh, a bunch of characters died. No, 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 It's very powerful and it really seeks to answer that question of, well, just because you put somebody else in power and you took somebody else out of power doesn't mean that the universe is well off or that everybody else is well off. In fact, sometimes it could mean worse things and some characters in this story actually end up worse than where they were when they started. Some end up better, but I digress. I don't want to give anything else away. Just know that it's awesome and art by Barnaby Begenda who uses the famous Watchmen 9 panel grid in this story absolutely crushes it. Perfection. Perfection. One of the best books that I've read this year. Like I said, I had to create a new category for when I reviewed this. So you're probably wondering at this point, what is my choice for the best comic of the year? What can top Hellboy? What can top Thor? Sheriff of Babylon? The Omega Man? And I really think there is only one book that really just touched me and left me crying and left me kind of emotionally broken and at the same time left with a lot of hope. Of course, I am talking about Dark Knight, a true Batman story. This is an autobiographical account of what happened to Paul Dini one fateful night when he was in California, he was walking home after a failed date, and he was assaulted and left for dead. Now, if you know anything about Paul Dini, he was one of the head writers, head artists of Batman the Animated Series in the 1990s. This story takes place in the 1990s, and if you know anything once more about Paul Dini, you know, at that time he was at the top of his game. Batman the Animated Series was winning multiple awards, he was raking in the dough, but at the same time, he wasn't happy. This is a story that is about healing, it's about redemption, it's about moving on, it's about accepting your flaws, it's about conquering your insecurities, all within the backdrop of using Batman characters to represent Paul Dini's inner disaster that he faced after being assaulted. It is incredible, it is moving, it is powerful, and I know I'm harping on this a lot, I know I am, but if I could go back, this would be the book that would receive the perfect award this year. I have not read a book this year that tops this. I said it earlier on at the beginning of this year that this was the book to beat and it was not beaten. I love this story. I've gone back and read it about four or five times and the way Paul Dini works out some of his innermost demons in this book is absolutely astounding. If you're looking for a book that is about Batman fighting his rogues gallery, beating him up to a pulp and all this other stuff, this is not what this book is about. Yes, the rogues gallery is in here. Yes, Batman is in here. All that stuff, they are here. However, this is not what this book is about. I'm telling you right now, if you go into this expecting this, you will be disappointed. This book is about a man conquering his demons and these characters being representatives of what he had to conquer and what he had to overcome, and using Batman as an analog for his own inner strength 
and having to use that character to show he can defeat the demons that are inside of him and he can get over his insecurity. Let me harp on the art for a second. Eduardo Riso crushes it on this book. It's absolutely astounding. Using different art styles throughout this entire book to dictate mood, to dictate emotion, to dictate a place in time in the story. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, I've seen Eduardo Riso's art before in 100 Bullets, and to be honest, I think he was kind of holding himself back because looking at the art in here, it's incredible. Hands down incredible. It is one of the best things that I have seen this year, just the different panels, the different layouts. There's a double page spread in here with Batman attacking these carjackers that is amazing. It is beautiful. This is my choice for the year. This is the best book I've read this year, and this is the most emotionally affecting book that I've read this year. There you go, guys. My top five choices for 2016. Those are the comics that really moved me. Those are the comics that I thought, man, these were the best of the best. It does not get better than this for me this year. I loved every single one of them. Like I've already said, I did not include Vision because I haven't read it. So without, you know, everybody bringing out the pitchforks and the torches and stuff like that in the comments section, go easy on me, guys. I plan to read it. I'm just holding out for a hardcover edition of it. Fingers crossed. This really was Tom King's year. Tom King was the guy in everybody's mouth. He cranked out Vision. He cranked out Sheriff of Babylon. And he cranked out Omega Man. Three books that for a lot of comic book readers are considering them modern day classics. I cannot digress. I can't, you know, disagree with any of that stuff. I have to say that based upon what I've read, Sheriff of Babylon and Omega Men really will probably go down as new classics of the genre. They are that good. They just, they really are that good. But with that said, check out some of these books, guys. And if this is your first time checking out my channel, hit the like button, hit the dislike button, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down below and what is your top five list in the comment section below. I'm really curious. I want to hear what you guys have to say. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. It's going to be found in the description. And if this is your first time checking out this channel, I do weekly reviews of hardcovers, trade paperbacks, omnibuses, all that good stuff. Check out that stuff as well. And if you want to support this channel, Patreon is an option. It's found in the description below. I know every single person and their mom has a Patreon at this point, but check it out. You never know. Love you guys. Have a great week.